When he was dying, Rupert Falks had the best care money could buy. His wife, Eleanor, saw to that. After the last round of chemo failed, she installed him in New York Presbyterian in a large, comfortable private room with a window facing the Hudson. She could have put him in hospice, but she knew that in his rare moments of lucidity, he'd want to be in a hospital. He'd fought the prostate cancer tooth and nail, and even when it took over his bones, inflicting almost unbearable pain, he fought on. He wasn't ready to go. He was only 65. Why can't you stop them? he had said to the oncologist when the third off-label drug didn't shrink the tumors. He fiddled with his wedding ring, worrying it like a loose tooth. The doctor gave a small, guilty shrug. He was out of drugs and words. How much time do I have? Rupert said. Will I see in the millennium? It was a week to Thanksgiving. The doctor nodded cautiously. If things progress as I expect, you should make it with a bit to spare. Rupert rubbed the top of his head, shiny and bald from the chemo. I remember when Nixon declared war on cancer. It must have been thirty years ago. He shook his head. I voted for the bugger. Eleanor's sons, she had five, knew her as playful, even mischievous, but in the presence of others, even close friends, she rarely revealed that part of her, except in her sly, darting wit. The qualities that drew people to her were her democratic manners, her open-handedness, and her attention to the comfort of others. Often these qualities passed mistakenly for charm, but charm is natural, innate, a gift. Eleanor was like a ballet dancer. What she did was hard work, born of arduous training, made to look as effortless as breathing. As she had always reliably primed the social pump, so she made Rupert's last months easier for everyone. She bought Starbucks cards, spa gift certificates, pizza and wine for all the aides, porters, and nurses on the floor. Rupert had always been fastidious, understandably, Eleanor thought, but overly. And though he slept most of the time, she rallied the staff to spare him the indignities of his body's failing systems. The aides kept him spotlessly clean, changing his diapers and sheets when they needed changing and turning him over gently to prevent bed sores. The porters took care as they mopped and scoured not to bump his bed. The nurses were attentive, never stinting on the morphine. Unless he was so medicated that he barely breathed, Rupert couldn't bear touch. Most days, Eleanor was unable to tell if Rupert sensed anything other than pain. Still, three times a week, she brought in fresh flowers, unseasonal and riotous, to put at his bedside, and she kept a radio humming by his ear, tuned to WQXR. Every afternoon she looked in to see him and read him short stories, Updike, Cheever, Monroe, his doctors made it a point to drop by when she was there. Afterward, she often went to the movies 